Jesus. It can be louder for Jesus, bigger for Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to his holy name. Amen. God bless you, Rigo. Welcome yourself to service. God bless you, Rigo. Please take your seat in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I welcome everybody to service in the name of Jesus. And those who are watching online, I welcome you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, tonight is a special night of revelations. It's a time where God, of course, takes us from one glory level to another. And he's been taking us, ladies and gentlemen, we've been enjoying it. Tonight is another night wherein God is decking you with greater glory. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody I'm receiving something special tonight. <laughs> My life is getting transformed. Say, I'm stepping up. I'm stepping higher in a greater glory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I welcome everybody to service in the mightiest name of him that died and rose on the third day. God bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, tonight, by the grace of God, we are still on victory lines in Christ Jesus. And we've been examining faith. And we've been looking at different levels of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, we've looked at the letter of faith. we looked at, ladies and gentlemen, the great faith, the so great faith. Uh, we've looked at different kinds of faith. And, of course, we've propped our teaching so far for the past couple of, of uh, weeks now on um, the exceeding growing faith. Am I right? Second Thessalonians chapter number one and verse number three, the Bible says that your faith grew exceedingly. Can you please lay your hands upon your chest and say that my faith <laughs> grew exceedingly. Say I have an exceeding growing faith. <laughs> say I have an amazing faith. The Lord is telling me that there's somebody here around the noon time tomorrow. He said a major delivery of faith will happen in your life. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. The exceeding growing faith. Say it again, the exceeding growing faith. Say, I know the kind of faith I have is a special faith of God. Now, I told you the exceeding growing faith is the faith of Jesus. Am I right? It's the faith of the Son of God. Because the Bible made us to understand that Jesus grew. Luke chapter number 2 and verse number 4 in the Bible says, And Jesus increased in stature, and he walked strong in the spirit. So he was growing in the spirit, walking strong in the spirit, increasing in stature. That is to say his body increased and his spirit increased. And then in verse number 52, the Bible says, and he increased in wisdom. Can you see? That is to say, ladies and gentlemen, that his soul also increased because the soul is the seat of wisdom. So he had it, spirit, soul, and body increasing. And then the Bible said, and he found favor with God and a man. And he increased in favor with God and a man. What is he trying to say, ladies and gentlemen? You see, uh, his, 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 his spirit increased. His soul increased. His body increased. And then, ladies and gentlemen, his external life, ladies and gentlemen, increased in favor. That is to say they complete him, internal and external, ladies and gentlemen, he was enjoying favor. There was something he was enjoying called increase. I'm not talking to somebody here. If there be any aspect of somebody's life who is under the sound of my voice that is not enjoying increase, you are, one way or the other, aged on one highland of stagnation. I mean, you're looking at yourself, ladies and gentlemen, and you can see that nothing seems to be moving. Or some certain aspect of your life not... It's not responding even to the dictate of God's word that says that concerning your life, you will be increasing on every side. I am speaking today. The exceeding growing faith is jacking up that aspect of you. Every aspect of you is stepping up. Oh, come on now. You have different businesses. They are stepping up. You have different fields of career. I say you are stepping up. At home, somebody is stepping up. In the family, you are stepping up. In your finance, you are stepping up. I'm speaking to somebody's at air. I say you are stepping up. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you are stepping You know, when we say these things, believe. When we say these things, what? A woman was with me on Monday. She had impairment in her ears. You know, I told you God has been hoping deaf ears. <laughs> and then I looked at the woman. She looked at me. I said, well, I said, we've got a lot of testimonies here. I lay hands on the hair. It was on the left hair. I lay hands on it. And I commanded the hair to open. As at the time I finished, everything was still there. I said, go, sleep, wake up. You will call me tomorrow and tell me what the Lord has done. The woman called me yesterday. said, Pastor, everything vanished. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Everything clear. She began to hear. She began, as in, she was so glad, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> with testimonies all over her mouth. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. When I speak to your head, all heavens in the name of Jesus carried out. I'm speaking that somebody's head is improving here. 
I said, somebody's jacking up body wise. If that is you, let him be the most receiving in the house. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? Tonight is the night that God is for taking us on Jesus' kind of faith. You know the Bible said in Mark 11, 22, of the God kind of faith. That means God has a kind of faith. Come on, tell somebody God has a kind of faith. And I share the same faith with God. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the same kind of faith. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Am I right? So Jesus' kind of faith is God's kind of faith. Am I right? And what is Jesus' kind of faith? Is the ever-growing faith. Because this Jesus grew. Am I right? And so the Bible says your own faith also grows exceedingly. Come on, is that not Jesus' kind of faith? It's not a stagnant faith. It's not a retrogressing faith. It's not a demoted faith. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a redundant faith. It's the exceedingly shooting high faith. Oh, come on. I'm talking to somebody here. You are shooting beyond your expectations tonight. You are coming to the realm where your enemies will see you after this meeting. And they will tell you there is something shining out of you. It's called the glory of God. I say it's called the beauty of God. Come on, tell somebody the glory is coming out of me. Something good is emanating out of me. Say something glorious imagine from me it's called the glory of God you believe that shout hallelujah are you hearing what God is talking about so when we are talking about the exceeding glory in faith we are talking about a kind of faith that we only find in the son of God the kind of faith that we only find in the power of God in the ability of the most high am I talking to somebody here now what are we saying ladies and gentlemen the exceeding growing faith is the kind of faith that God you know, has given to Jesus. Isaiah chapter number 9 and verse number 6. Down to verse number 7, the Bible says, Unto us a son is given. And unto us a child is born, the Bible says. And the, of course, unto us a child is given. Right? And a son is born. No, a, child, a son is given and a child is born. Now the Bible says, And of the increase of his kingdom and peace, there shall be no end. So you see, for this Jesus, so it is ever increasing. So if you have the kind of faith that is ever increasing, you are in line with Jesus. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. I say, if you have that kind of faith, you are in line with who? With Jesus. So ladies and gentlemen, I think it was celebrating. I think it was, ladies and gentlemen, having some felicitations upon. I think, ladies and gentlemen, we can rejoice on this, that we share the same faith with Jesus. Glory be to his holy name. A round of applause wouldn't be bad for that. I share the same faith with Jesus. Glory be to God. <laughs> say it again, I share the same faith with the Son of God. Glory be to God. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? So our faith is the exceeding what? Growing faith. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we began to look at the caprices and the confines and all the, ladies and gentlemen, extensions of the exceeding growing faith. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean, it's, it's such a long list that we cannot exhaust. But I think for the sake of, of course, this series, we're just going to touch on all the ones the Holy Spirit wants us to touch on. And tonight, by the grace of God, we are being on faith and labor. Am I right? We've looked at faith and different fields of labor. The labor of your hands. Am I right? The labor of what? Of your hands. And at the same time, we looked at the labor of what? Of laboring in prayers. Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Your brother Epaphras laboring fervently in prayers. Am I right? That you may stand complete and perfect in all the will of God. Am I right? Then we looked at the labor of love. Am I right? Hebrews chapter number 6 and verse number 10. The Bible says uh, that God is not unjust that you should forget your labor of what? Of love. And then we looked at the labor in the world. Am I right? The Bible says, can them of double honor. Even the hell does that rule well. Am I right? That labor in world and in doctrine. Am I talking to somebody here? So laboring in the world, ladies and gentlemen, is a field of scripturally recognized labor. Glory be to God. Come on, tell somebody, I labor in the world. <laughs> I labor with my hands. I labor in prayers. And I labor in love. Glory be to God in the highest. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at faith and labor and the deliveries. Am I right? Now, please understand, a lot of people think faith is all about just the words of their mouths. Just keep speaking it and you're going to get it. We'll thank God for that. But Proverbs chapter 13, the Bible says, Proverbs, is it 13, 24 now, 25? Proverbs 13, the Bible says that, of course, the mere talk of the mouth leader to what? To, labor, to penury. He said, in all labor, there is what? Profit. Now, but mere talk of the mouth leader to penury. And I told you that is the Old Testament version of James 2.17 that says, faith without work is dead. 
Now, may I talk of the mouth, which is faith? Uh, the Bible says we also believe in. Of course, we also speak. Second Corinthians 4 to 10, we believe and we speak. So faith is all about speaking. If thou shalt believe and thou shalt say to this Monday, thou shalt have what you say. So faith is all about speaking. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Faith is all about speaking. But the Bible says mere talk. That is not coupled with labor. The Bible says it leads to high level poverty. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So there must be, ladies and gentlemen, a contemporaneity of oppression between labor and faith for there to be a delivery that can cause what I call a total satisfaction of human needs. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So your needs will be satisfied when there is a compatibility. What I say, a successful combination of the operations of your faith and of the labor of your hands. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Brother Paul, the apostle speaking in Acts chapter number 20 verse 34. Brother Paul said that these hands of mine have, of what? Of what? Are provided for my necessities and of course and of the needs of those who are with me. Am I right? <laughs> these ends of mine. But but Paul said, my God shall supply all your needs. And he's saying these ends of mine. That means God walk through my hands to provide my needs. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. I say God is walking through somebody's hand to provide his needs here. Is your one ya to me? Lift up only and say, Is your one me to me? Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So my hands, ladies and gentlemen, are important for God's operations. I'm not talking to somebody here. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are rounding up on faith and labor. We are looking at the convergence of faith with labor. Last week, Wednesday, I told you very strictly and very importantly that one thing faith does is that it is the precursor of blessings. Am I right? I told you that anytime, any day you see faith, you see blessings. Now look at it. The Bible said, the man by the name Abraham was the man who got the whole estate of divine blessing upon his life for this race that we call Christianity. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Lord Jesus Christ came and took that blessing and made it ubiquitous. He universalized, uh, universal, uh, universalized the blessings. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? He made it ubiquitous. He made it available everywhere. He made it, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to be something that is easily connectable to every uh, human being, to all humanity. Jesus came and spread it. But Abraham got it from God. The Bible said in Genesis chapter number 12, and verse number 1, Abraham, the Bible said, God has cut out of his father's house. Uh, and the Almighty called him out of his kindred, out of his nation. And God said unto him, come out of your father's house. He said, and I will bless thee, and I will make your name great, and I will bless those who bless you. And those who curse you will I curse. And in this shall all the families of the heart be blessed. So it was a call unto blessing. Come on, tell somebody, I am caught out of darkness into light, and it was a call unto blessings. So ladies and gentlemen, if somebody say, why are you always preaching blessing? It's because we were called unto blessing. It's not my fault. I'm called unto blessing. Glory be to God. Let me tell somebody I'm called unto blessings. Say, I'm blessed beyond causes. Say, I'm blessed beyond reverses of order. He said, nothing can oppress me. Nothing can press me down. I'm too blessed for anybody to disdain. Too important, ladies and gentlemen, to be ignored. When I stand anywhere in the name of Jesus, the blessing of God stands. I am the blessed of God. Lift up your two and say, I'm blessed. In the morning I'm blessed. At night I'm blessed. In my sleep I'm blessed. Oh, the Lord is telling me to tell somebody here. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 11, the Bible says, your gates shall continually be open day and night and they shall never be shut. You know the meaning of that? That means God will be opening online blessing for some people here. That even in your sleep, people will still be patronizing you. Do you know when they are sleeping in America, some people are buying Microsoft software, even on their website. Big Gate is sleeping, he's still making money. Now that scripture is not meant for Big Gate. It's meant for the spiritual Israel of God. Talking about you and I. Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible says your gates shall be open day and night. I said dollars will not is flowing to your bosom. Oh, come on, I'm talking to angel. Yeah, 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 yeah. The anointing is on my hand here. Somebody take it in the name of <laughs> Maropaya. My hand is rusty with power. I said, Somebody take it in the name of Jesus. Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible says when you sleep, it is blessing. When you wake up, it is blessing. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, what a person you are. You are so different. There's an anointing about you. There's a calling unto blessing. There's an empowerment. I think tonight is empowerment night. Somebody's connecting with blessing. Say, I am called unto blessing. I know the essence of my calling. 
Glory be to God. You know, the Bible says that your eyes of understanding might be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. You must know the reason why he called you. Do you understand I'm talking about Ephesians chapter number 1 and verses 17 and 18? That your eyes of understanding might be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. The Bible said when he called him out, he called him unto blessing. Am I talking to somebody here? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in a race. Ladies and gentlemen, in blessing, marching on to greater blessings. Oh my goodness, I know who I am. I am blessed. Say it again, I am blessed. Glory be to God in the highest. Are you catching what I'm talking about? Now having this fundamental understanding, ladies and gentlemen, we now go uh, understanding what God was teaching us last week. That faith is the precursor of blessings. Abraham was blessed. He was called out. But what do we call Abraham? The father of what? The father of faith. And he got all the blessings. The blessing that you and I share today is, 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 is Abrahamic blessing. Yes, that's the blessing Jesus brought to us. The Bible said in Galatians chapter number 3, starting from verse 13. Galatians 3, starting from verse 13. The Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from every cause of the Lord, being made a cause for us. <sighs> for it is ready. Cost is every man that what? That hangeth on the tree. Now you see, he didn't just redeem us from causes and left our lives vacant. He did redeem you, ladies and gentlemen, from poverty, from the cause of sickness, from the cause, ladies and gentlemen, of stagnation, from the cause of sadness, maladies, ladies and gentlemen, sorrows and griefs. The Bible said he didn't remove those things and then left you empty. No, the Bible said the next line, that the blessings of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. <laughs> Even through the Lord Jesus Christ, by faith. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That we may receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you see, the blessing of Abraham was what Jesus passed across to you and I. Oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here now? <laughs> and the Abraham that got the blessing was the man of what? Of faith. So faith connects you with blessings. And that's why the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles through the Lord Jesus Christ that we may receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So without faith, you can't connect with the blessing. That's why Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 9 says, As many as our faith have blessed with faithful Abraham. So your high channel to divine blessing is faith. Is what? It's faith. So when we understand that what faith, ladies and gentlemen, generate his blessing, then it's easy for us to go on in this teaching. Is it clear? I think last week God taught us that, right? So what faith generates is what? His blessing, ladies and gentlemen. Faith provokes the release of divine blessing. It connects you with the blessings of God. What is blessing? Let me make this very clear to you. <laughs> Anytime you hear about divine blessing, we are talking about divine empowerment. It is a release of God's power, ladies and gentlemen, upon a man or upon a business that takes that man from where he is to the next level. That is empowerment. When a word of blessing comes upon your life, when a word of prophecy comes, it takes you from where you are and relocates you to where you ought to be. Oh, come on, am I? The Lord is telling me that I should tell everybody, please pay attention. Switch off your phones. Switch off your phones. You see, at this particular time, I'm passing something across, very important. When I was praying upstairs before I came down, the Lord told me, he said, tonight is empowerment night. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And I don't need, ladies and gentlemen, to lay hands before it is passed. Why Peter, yes, spake these words. The Spirit came upon all the heard. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, and the Spirit entered me when he spake unto me. Ezekiel 2 and verse number 2. As this word is coming forth by the power of the Spirit of God. I said something called empowerment is coming on your finance. Something called empowerment is coming on your works. Something called empowerment is coming on your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not trying to get you unnecessarily conscious. But my two hands are burning right now. I said fire is burning on my hands. And I know that God is saying something. He's releasing something on somebody's life. That tonight is your night of supernatural empowerment. You know, <clears throat> imagine we were at my mom's party in Dubai, August 24. We were eating and dancing, not praying. Eating and what? I think the only prayer we prayed was opening prayer. Which pastors in prayed? I was not the one who prayed. Am I right? Uh -huh. So we were eating and dancing and dancing. And, and after I feel, dancing, you know, and in fact, they were dancing. They were singing, of course, with some praises, largely. And you know what I'm talking about? And we're singing, and then we're dancing. And, you know, by the time we finish, one Indian man was there. And I started, they said, Pastor, now I finished. They said, let me now start ministering to people. Let me just bless you before I leave. 
all of us that danced, the Indian man just stepped out. I looked at him. He was at the hem of affairs in his company. The man called me today. Today, I was in office. Sister Nola was with me. Sister Nola was here in our conversations. And the man said, man of God, he said, you spoke to me when you came to Dubai. I said, yes. He said, you said, you see me leaving my place of work. He was like the boss of a big company in Dubai. He said, you saw me leaving my place of work and starting a new business. And then you told me specifically that it's a furniture business. That you saw help rising. And God, you know, raising me up for this. He said, when you gave me that word, he said, I was wondering, I was lost. Because I could not relate with the prophecy. That was what he said. I lie not in the presence of God. He said, I could not relate with the prophecy. What are you talking about? I, I'm already doing where, where I am. How, why will I leave my company? And then, and this Indian man, ladies and gentlemen, said, man of God, last week, the place of work gave me a letter of termination. I was terminated from my work. And the moment termination came, I was wondering, what is this? Is this not the prophecy that man of God gave? That he saw me leaving my place of work. And I'm starting a new business. And this one and that one. The man said, and after he was terminated and somebody called him. He said, can't we form a partnership? He said, can't we start all this furniture business? And can't we this and can't we that? The man of God called me today and he said, Pastor, that is what we are starting now. Ladies and gentlemen, now, you see, it was a party. <laughs> it was what? Eh? Now, if God could be faithful in parties, how much more when we are directly sitting at his feet here? Somebody must be empowered to the next level of destiny. <laughs> I said, somebody must be empowered to the next level of destiny. Now, when the man was telling me that today, I was just wondering. I said, God, thank you. At the same party, the woman that was singing and her husband, her husband was playing, playing the piano. You know, I prayed for them after. The, the husband called me yesterday. The husband said, man of God, he said, I've been expecting promotion for four years. He said, I was the one playing piano. My wife was the one singing. He said, I want to tell you what happened. He said, we came out to meet you and then you held hands with us and you were praying. And you said, you see doors opening and you see us right now being promoted. He said, you looked at my wife. You said, so, 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 you can see this. Ah, madam, you are not having any specific job in your hands. He said, you could see a job. He said, you prophesied everything and you left us there. He said, and you told us that this will happen now. He said, man of God, I want to tell you what happened. He said, the next day, I got to my place of work with that, with that anointing. He said, the moment I stepped in, the whole place went haywire. He said, they were sad as those who needed to meet me. He has been expecting promotion in his place of work for four years. That means probably he's been there for eight years. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You no, know, after every four, four years, they will give. Now, four years came. They didn't. So, for four years, year after year, he was expecting what they're supposed to have done four years ago. The man said, I, I, I tell you, that next day, that next day, the whole management, everything was troubled. He said, they, they had to make, they had to conclude the matter, and they brought out the, my letter of promotion, and they gave it to me that next day. He said, that is not the handle. He said, my wife. He said, a big company just arose the next day. And he said, ah, what's this woman doing? And they got her papers and processed her job, and the next day, that same day, that within 24 hours, the woman, so I said, you got your promotion in 27 years. Your wife got a job in 24 hours. He said, Pastor, only a tea drinker said, only an another one. Nobody person share law. Ah, monitor in the color, I'm meeting. Are you catching what I'm talking about? He said, Those are the things you told us after the party, after we danced it. Now we are singing his awesome in this place. You think nothing will happen? <laughs> Lift up holy hands and give him praise. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in the place where miracles are happening in your life. I'm telling you, people in 24 hours will testify. I said, people in 24 hours will testify. What you have been waiting for for four years, for 10 years, is landing in your hand tonight easily. You believe what I'm talking about? I think your human should be the loudest in the house. Are you catching what I'm talking about? Uh, what am I saying? What am I saying? We are called unto what? On the blessings. And faith is the precursor of uh, blessings. Now, so blessing is an empowerment. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. The Bible said something very crucial about you, Pastor Tosa. After God made you, the first word that was ever spoken to you. Thank God that first word did not come from a witch. I thank God that it was never in any capacity pro 
Ejecting out of your adversaries. It came from the mouth of the Almighty God Himself. The Bible said, Genesis 1:28. The first word that programmed you, the first word that configured you, the first word that came inside of you and made you who you are. The Bible said that word was a word of blessing. Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 28. And God said, after he had made man, and God said unto him, and the Bible said, and the Lord blessed him and said, Be fruitful and what? And multiply. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And the Lord blessed him. So the first word that came over your life was the word of blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been blessed beyond their causes. I say you've been blessed beyond your oppression. I say you've been blessed beyond any reverser. Come on, tell somebody the first order is what comes to pass in my life. I am blessed. Shout it again. I am blessed. Shout it aloud. I'm blessed. Are you catching what God is talking about? So the Bible said that God said, be fruitful. And so God blessed him. Now, you see, he created him like any other animals. Uh, of course, everybody here, more especially that have done some biology or some medicine or whatever, we, we agree with me that we share a lot with animals in terms of our biological system, our anatomy to some extent, and our physiology to some extent. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, animals also, I mean, a lot of them have, they have two kidneys, am I right? We have one heart, we have two lungs, am I right? They have one liver, they have one pancreas, am I right? They have the large intestine, they have the small intestine. Ladies and gentlemen, they have the stomach, they have the esophagus, ladies and gentlemen, they have the respiratory tract, they have the nasal cavity, they have the eyes, the ocular cavity, they have the ears. Ladies and gentlemen, they got the brain, they got the cranium, they got everything. They got the, you know, the backbone. They got, of course, the, the, you know, they got, they got the four limbs and all that. So we share a lot with them in terms of, you know, our biological makeup. But one of the things I want to let you know, God said, what is going to make a difference between Pastor Tosi and Gorilla? He said, God will bless him. He said, God will. So that blessing empowered him above others. He set him over and above. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are blessed in business, you shoot above your equals. The Bible says, because you have loved it, righteousness and hidden iniquities. Therefore, the Lord that God has released the oil of gladness, the blessing, the empowerment of God, even over your life. Uh, there's somebody here. You might be equal with them. Something is projecting you beyond them. <laughs> As if something is setting you apart from them. You are becoming the primus into Paris right now. First among equal. <laughs> you believe what I'm talking about? <laughs> if you are that person, shout amen. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So it makes a difference about us. It's the empowerment of God. Am I talking about? It's the blessing of God. He sets us aside. Glory be to God. Lift up holy and say, I am blessed. So having this understanding that blessing is an empowerment, God says something very crucial about blessing. In, in Malachi chapter number 3, starting from verse number 10, you know, God was talking about tithe. But I'm not preaching on tithe tonight, so please relax. You know, I've been paying your tithe. Like, Pastor is going to hit my head tonight. No, I'm not going to hit your head. <laughs> my concentration is not on tithe. <laughs> Glory be to God. We are on the blessing. Amen. Now, Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 10, the Bible says, uh, Bring ye all the tithes to my house, that there may be meat in my house. And put me to test. The Lord said, there's somebody here. You might be watching me or you are, you are here. The Lord said, you are struggling to pay your tithe. He said, because it is not enough. Your provisions are not enough. He said, from today, I move you to more than enough. Mark that word. Now, Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 10, the Bible says, bring ye all the tithes to my house that there may be meat in my house. He said, and put me now to test. He said, prove me now. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour your heart, what? A blessing. Now, this is where a lot of people don't understand it. They think that when they pay their tithes, you know, cars begin to drop from heaven over them. Ladies and gentlemen, in human history, we've never seen anywhere where cars dropped. It doesn't drop. It is blessing that drops. I said it is empowerment that drops. It is a grace that drops. It is the activity of the Holy Ghost producing, ladies and gentlemen, an upliftment that drops from heaven. Am I talking to somebody here? So the Bible says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out what? A blessing. Now, I want you to see how the blessing works. Ladies and gentlemen, it works in two folds. It works in what? Now, I want to show you those two folds. Number one is this. It works by generating supernatural visions. It works by generating supernatural ideas. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen. One of the things that has held many bound is the lack of an understanding of the way forward. Many people know that wealth is good. Many people know the attainment of a position of power 
power he's glorious but how to get there is what they don't know i don't know if you understand what i'm talking about the bible says the labor of the of the foolish will react everyone because he knoweth not how see and the question how is always answered by the word of wisdom by a revelation of god that is called the word of wisdom the bible said and solomon was asking god in first kings chapter number three when god asked him from verse number five the lord appeared to him in gibeon what do you want me to do for you solomon said for how will i judge these people how so the question is how god said oh, no no one thing. i'm going to give you a wise and discerning heart wisdom will answer that question how ladies and gentlemen how am i going to be a billionaire this year there is a word of wisdom that can answer it i'm talking to somebody i submit to you in the name of jesus with all humility in my heart that how do i get to that next level there is a word of wisdom <laughs> i see somebody receiving that divine idea i see somebody receiving that nudging right now he's coming into your spirit nothing can barricade his entry right now penetrating all through all barriers and impediments he's catapulting itself he's moving like an helicopter he's landing on you right now as you are seated you are feeling something on your head he's the anointing of the holy ghost he's generating the visions he's generating the word of wisdom he's generating the idea he's telling you where to go who to address who to talk to how to get it you are that person receiving come and shout amen are you catching what I'm talking about? So you see, a revelation from God, you see, answers that question. Somebody said, ideas rule the world. And that is the truth. We live in a world of ideas. Everything, everybody there you see in positions of power, on authority, in inventions, in business, and all that, they all sat down and caught the idea someday, one day. Am I right? Somebody thought one day, can't we have First Bank? And it started. Am I right? It's been there over 100 years now. Somebody thought of Nestle. And then it started. Somebody thought of Bon Vida. And then it started. Am I right? So, you see, it, it firstly came into somebody's heart. Am I right? <laughs> the Bible said in Acts chapter number 7, and it came into Moses' heart to visit his people. Why? The time has come for destiny to kick off in his life. From that moment when he went visiting, ladies and gentlemen, destiny started. Before that moment, he was just in Pharaoh's palace. Nobody had anything about him. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. I'm speaking about the anointing of God. And power is all over me. The hair of my head are standing strong right now. And my two legs are on fire. As I'm speaking about the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, it will be coming to your heart what destiny is saying over your life right now. From this moment, somebody, you are moving into the next stage of your destiny. It's come, you will sleep, you will wake up, you wake up with a new idea. Tomorrow morning, you are rising with a new idea. A solution is coming right now to this situation. A termination is coming to that long prolonged, that long protracted, even illness in your business in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, your solution is there. Come and lay hands on your chest. Say, in the name of Jesus, my heart indicts a good matter. Say, my heart indicts a good matter. Say, my my heart and that's a good matter from now in the name of Jesus I walk in higher revelations glory be to God am I talking to somebody here so now oh come on now it's clapping because time is gone am I right no time is not gone I can still continue my goodness the function is strong on this meeting can you feel it <laughs> glory be to God hallelujah I'm not talking to somebody here so are you hearing what I'm saying so what I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that there is an anointing you understand what I'm talking about when God opened the windows of heaven and poured you a blessing, it firstly comes as his visions, as ideas, as word of wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes as revelations. Word of wisdom is one of the workings of the Holy Ghost. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, the Bible says, starting from verse number 1, as to spirituals, I wouldn't have you ignorant. And then verse number 4, the Bible says, there are diversities of gifts, yet the same spirit. Uh, there are diversities. The Bible says, there are differences of administration, yet the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, yet the same spirit, there is the same God. God that walk it on in all. The Bible says the manifestations of the Spirit is given unto all to profit with all. And then verse number eight, the next verse, the Bible says unto one is given the word of wisdom. It is express revelation of God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That comes to provide a solution to a situation. The, how do we get this thing done? There is a solution. Am I talking to somebody here? There is what? There is a solution. The Lord said there's somebody here, you will be called into it. That's what I'm hearing. He said, you will be called. Uh, I think you rejoice. That's a big word. Father, I receive it. I receive it. Last year when I gave a word as to 
you know, when God gave us the word concerning unending harvest, that same week I was called into a great opportunity. That opportunity has been a big opportunity of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, there's somebody here, you will be called into it. You know nothing about it, they will reach you calling. <laughs> By the masses of the most I got. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now, are you, are, are you there? Are you there? If you are there, shout hallelujah. So, you see, it produces visions, ideas, word of wisdom, revelations that give solutions. The Bible said, when God opened the windows of heaven, he said, I will pour you down a blessing. Now, what happens when he opens the window of blessing? In Genesis chapter number 7, in the days of Noah, the Bible said on the 11th verse, Genesis chapter 7, verse 11, the Bible said, and in the 600th year of, you, of Noah, in the second month and the 17th day, that very day, Lehu Janamantes, which is today in somebody's life. That very day, the Bible says, that very day, the fountains of the great deeps were broken. <laughs> and the windows of heaven were opened. The Bible says, and the rain came down. Negebo, verses 11 and 12. And the rain came down 40 days and 49. So when the windows of heaven are opened, Mimbronia, there's always a day for it. And today is that day. He told me, he said, I'll be empowerment in this. I don't know the service will go this way. You can feel the power of God all over the service right now. It's the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to somebody here. This day is your day. This day is your day. You are rising as a generator of ideas. You are rising as a generator of visions. From tonight, in the name of Jesus, whoever has the word of wisdom, the Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. When you don't know how to go about it, wisdom provides you the direction. I'm speaking to somebody here. By the power of the Holy Ghost, receive the word of wisdom. Receive the word of wisdom. Receive the word of wisdom. It is done in the name of Jesus. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So listen, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible said that, the Bible said that in the days of Noah, the windows of heaven were open and rain came down. What came down? Rain. So when God said, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, rain is the blessing. There are two dimensions, ladies and gentlemen, of the activities of rain in the life of the saint. And I want to let you understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the rain that God is talking about means these two things. Number one, it means visions, ideas. It means revelations. It means the operations of the Spirit providing, ladies and gentlemen, guidance and providing even a lead for you into the next stage of your life. Now the Bible said in Joel chapter number 2 starting from verse number 22. Joel chapter number 2 starting from verse number 22. The Bible says, be you not afraid O ye beast of the field. He said for the... <clears throat> He said, for, of course, the, the, the pasture, even spring a fault, even in the wilderness. He said, the trees of the field, he said, he said they, have, they, they, they become fruitful. He said, even the fig tree and the vine, the Bible said, for they yield what? Their fruit, their strength. Now, verse number 23, the Bible says, be glad, therefore, you, you children of Zion. Now, he firstly addressed animals. He said, be not afraid, you beast. Oh, he said, lion, don't be afraid. I'm going to provide pasture for you to eat. He said, horses, don't be afraid. I'm going to make sure I take care of you. Now, God is not addressing human beings again. Can you say, he said, be ye glad, all ye children of Zion. He said, for he has given unto, he said, he said, be ye glad, all ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord, I go for he has given unto you the former rain moderately. He said, and it will cost to rain for you. Both the former rain and the latter rain, even in the first month. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? In this month of fruitfulness, remember he said the previous verse, the trees shall be fruitful. He said the vine and the holy that is to say there is nothing called an investment in your hand. There is nothing called a company in your hand. There is nothing called a business in your hand. There is nothing called a career in your hand. There is nothing called, ladies and gentlemen, a field of the deployment of your skills and professionalism that will never be fruitful this month. Are you catching what I'm talking about? The Bible said, Nikopo Soto Yagabra Halahaxi. Man, oh man, I feel the power of God coming on my forehead like this. If you have been having an issue around your forehead, you are healed right now. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So are you hearing what I'm talking about? The Bible says, for God will cause the rain to fall for you. So what will the rain do? Ladies and gentlemen, verse 28, and I will pour out my spirit upon the flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Can you see? He said, when I pour out my spirit, it will provoke revelations and the emanation, the emergence of what I call guidance.
years out of your life into the next place of your destiny. Am I talking to somebody here? This revelations will begin to lead you. It will begin to take you to the next place. He said in Isaiah chapter number, Isaiah chapter number 48 verse 17. He said, I'm the Lord that redeemer. I'm the Lord that teacher you to profit. That guided in the way you should go. So if I'm the one guiding you, profit must emerge. The teaching of God and the leading of God is always to the highland of profit. Ladies and gentlemen, as I'm teaching right now, I'm guiding you on how to go impact you. Prophets are all over the hair right now. <laughs> they are flying all over the hair right now. Somebody's getting profit here right now. I mean, gains are coming to your bosom. You are the one receiving short amen. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So the Bible said, I will cause the rain to fall and then my spirit will begin to produce visions. Do you know it didn't say we will produce healing miracles, health miracles? No, the what it will produce first when the rain comes is visions, guidance, prophecies that will give you. That prophecy came for that man and guided him. You see, he has been on that job. He said he has been on that job for so many years, so many years of his life. To rise to that leadership position probably has been there for 10, 15 years. But when a prophet comes, you see, they just don't foretell. They foretell. You know, you know what I'm talking about? That means when they speak, it, it comes to pass immediately. They are speaking with power. They are not telling you what shall be. They are, they are saying that power is backing it to enforce it immediately. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So as I'm speaking right now, you are getting empowered. Mark my word. The Lord said I should tell everybody. He said, at the end of this month, he said, you look at yourself and your income is greater than your past. Yeah. Father, I receive that. <laughs> Lord, I received that. Lord, I received that. Lord. You know, one of my daughters came today. I gave her a word of promotion. And then she came today. And as we were she was promoted last year. I said, I said, you will get another promotion. And she said, man of God. <laughs> she looked at me and she gave me a big promise. So I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> so when she came today, she had not told me that something has happened. She resumed work yesterday. She didn't tell me. I said, see, I see a light on your head. And I see this light shining in your place of work. And it's generating results. And they are going to call you right now for this, for, pro for promotion. And this and this. And even for me to say the promotion, I know me, I, me, I lock her because I know she got promoted last year. And it's a big uh, company all over Nigeria. So I said, and I see this. And I, and lady said, ah, he said, look at you. He said, they gave me the letter yesterday. He said, and I rejected the salary offer they put there, the increase. Ah, Mule rejected. Who not rejected it? Since God has said it, so I have the right now to, to tranga on his word. It must come to pass. Only, only, only immediately they took my father to the, to the CEO, and the CEO started considering immediately to increase it. <laughs> I looked at her, she looked at me, we started laughing together. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, when the word comes, it doesn't even matter whether you were promoted yesterday, whether you are not deep. There are some people that have been there for seven years, they've not been promoted. But somebody got it last year and is getting it again. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes, it comes with power. It comes with power. So I'm speaking to somebody's life here. New allow day, new ruko Jesu ikbiga bany. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Oh, 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 oh I said before. So I'm about random, please. What I saying before? So it produces what vision when the windows of heaven are open and rain comes. Am I right? So it produces uh, visions. I will pour out my spirit because I give you the first rain and the latter rain. Am I right? So that is the first thing it produces. The second thing it produces, ladies and gentlemen, is an empowerment on the works of your hand. Now, vision will guide you to what to do and how to do it. Then an empowerment follows. It's more or less like saying you foretell and at the same time you are foretelling. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You are speaking and it's power backed. Is some of the culture I'm talking about. One of the greatest advantages of divine leading is divine backing. Because what God says, God backs. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? When that person is speaking by the Spirit, God backs it up to make sure that thing comes to pass. Do you understand? I've seen people that will come and put a word in my mouth. Hey, Pastor, I'm believing God for this job. I said, yeah, get a job. Now you get it. Immediately I said it. But next day, they give them a letter. Do you understand? It's like you, they just need their power to run through me to confirm that thing for them. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Please understand, that is power back up. Now the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, that is what we're talking about here now. Deuteronomy 28, ladies and gentlemen, and verse number, verse number, uh, uh, verse number, verse number 11 and verse number 12. Deuteronomy 28, verses 11 and 12. The Bible says, the Lord will make you plenteous in goods. 
Did you see a prophesy over your life? The Lord makes you plenteous and good. Many of you will have houses in unfathomable places. You will have properties in places where you never fathom or thought in your life. Where you never dreamt you could ever live. Areas and realms you never dreamt you could ever live. God will take you there in the name of Jesus. Many of you will build houses in Hassel Rock. They will give you land to build. By the mercy of the Most High God, I prophesy over your life. Destiny is locating you tonight. Lift up your hands and say in the name of Jesus, I connect with it afresh. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? The Bible said the Lord will make you plenteous in goods. He said in the fruit of your body and in the fruit of your cattle and in the fruit of thy land. Can you see? It? That means in all, remember it was an agrarian society. So God said in all realms, I will make you absolutely fruitful. Now verse number 11. He said the Lord will open unto you his good treasures. <laughs> Ketron Kuhlman was teaching many years ago about over, 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 definitely over 40. 46, 47 years ago. She went to be with the Lord in February 1976. Now the Bible said this woman was teaching and this woman said, I'm sorry, this woman was teaching and she said, he said, do you know what it means when God opened unto you his good treasures? He said, you don't know what it means. When that treasure is open, it's open. Ketun Kuma, as at the day she was dying, she had invitation into over 50 nations of the heart on, on her table. They said, uh, in fact, uh, or, uh, Robert, uh, Robert Leadon said there's no way she could match up with that schedule. He said her schedule was so packed that she doesn't know how a person could match up with that kind of schedule. The moment the healing gift came on her, ladies and gentlemen, global relevance visited her. This woman began to spread everywhere. The good treasures of God was open. Everybody wanted to bless her. May I prophesy, it is visiting you as favor. It is, the Bible said in Acts chapter 7 verses 9 and 10, it said by the favor and wisdom of God upon Joseph, the Bible said, and Pharaoh promoted him through the favor and the wisdom of God on his life. I prophesy today that it is coming as favor and coming as wisdom, coming as favor and coming as wisdom is coming upon your life. People just like you. They just believe in you. They just want to give you the job. They want to give you the contract. They want to give you right now the assignment. They want to bless you. They just want to be a blessing to your family. I say you are the one I'm talking to. You are the one receiving. You can't be receiving a message. You can't be grabbing a message. You can't, ladies and gentlemen, lay hold on it on your set. You're going to jump and say, I receive. Take your seat. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So the Bible made us to understand that the Lord will open unto you is what? His good treasures. Now, what happens when God opens his good treasures? You know, that's what God is saying when I open the windows of heaven. <laughs> that's my good treasure. Heaven look big, what can you hear? The Bible says, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, he said, Lay not your, your little treasures on heart here, where there are moats and roads and everything. He said, But lay it up in heaven. He said, That is where God is. That's where the treasure of God is. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said, He said, Lay it up. So there are treasures in heaven. So when God opened the windows of heaven, it is treasures of heaven that come down. <laughs> Oh, come on. I don't know what I'm talking to somebody here. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So the Bible said that the Lord will open unto you is what? His good treasures. How? The heavens to give you rain in his season, to give rain to your land. In the, that is to say that you will never miss out on your timing. Ladies and gentlemen, to say that your heart of time is not applicable to you is an aberration unacceptable. I say it is an anomaly, ladies and gentlemen, that is never acceptable. I am prophesying to somebody here. Your time, no Ruko J. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? The Bible said they're able to give you rain in his what? In a season. And what will happen? He said, by reason of this rain, he said, and to bless all the works of what? Of so you see, when heaven gives rain, he blesses the works of it. So it's a blessing. So when God said, open the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. Now see, God said, I will, the, the windows I open is rain. And then it's a blessing upon the works of your hands. So when he opens rains, he gives you directions, visions. When he opens rain, he gives blessing on the works of your hands. When the, the combination of the direction and the blessing on the works of your hands, ladies and gentlemen, makes for excellence and glory in all that you do. So you need a blessing on the works of your hands. You need the blessing on the what? On the works of your hands. So ladies and gentlemen, faith generates blessings. is the precursor to blessing. But when blessing comes, it rests on the works of your hands. This is the convergence of faith and labor. Where there is no labor, faith generates the blessing. But there is nothing for the blessing to land on. 
Many of you are in contracts that, ladies and gentlemen, they are called tight hand contracts. That means that you have entered into a contract where no matter how much you labor, all you are entitled to is 10,000 naira per month. $10,000 per month. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, why don't you also open open hand contracts for God? Jacob was in a contract like that. I said, no, don't worry, I will labor for, for seven years for your daughter. Ah, the man said, okay. He changed it, it became 14 years for him. And no sheep, not even one lamb was ascribable to the, the Jacob with 14 years of labor. Why? He has entered into, an, into a closed end contract and there's nothing God can do. The Bible says, respect the covenant. God respect covenant. He's not a covenant breaker. Do you understand? For the dark places of the heart are full of cruelty. So, but you see, ladies and gentlemen, when God now taught him, how did God teach him? The Almighty had promised him when he was going to his father's house. When he's leaving his father's house, going to Laban's house. In Genesis 28, when he saw the ladder that reaches heaven and earth. Genesis 28 from verse 12. God said, I will bless you in this house, nations that I'll be blessed and all that. Now, and Jacob woke up. Verse 20, 21, 22, he said, I will pay you tight for all of this and all that. That's why it's good when you pay your tithe, ladies and gentlemen. Always be a giver. It allows revelations to flow. Now, when it is time, Laban was cheating him for 14 years. The angel of the Lord came, and Jacob was accounting to his wife how all the wealth he got came. In Genesis 31, verse number 10, Jacob said he saw in a vision the angel that spoke to him, verses 10 and 11. He said he saw how this, this, the, the spotted and the sprinkled were mating upon this and that, and the animals were giving back to this and this and that, and they showed him how he could, you know, uh, you know, peel a stick and put it in front of the animals. So when the 14 years reached, and Laban said, please don't go. Genesis chapter 30, verse 27. He said, I've learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He said, please don't go. The man said, yes, you know. He said, little did you have when I came. With all your years of being a shepherd, you had been the uncle, the senior brother of my mother. You've been a shepherd before my mother married. And now, my mother married, and I'm even in your house now, and this and this and that, and I came and this and that. He said, now, he said, you've been a shepherd for several years, and you, all your labor still amounted to little. But he said, now, little did you have when I came, but now it has grown to a multitude. But how will I make for my own household? That means the time has come for me to have an open hand contract. He said, please, let me only take the spotted animals, which were the few ones, because I've caught a revelation, a direction from God. <laughs> Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So many of you, you need to open doors of investment, doors of opportunities for God to bless you. You need to, it's good to have closed hand contracts, but at the same time, have open hand what? So that when the blessing is coming, it's not going another direction as well. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So now, with the open end contract, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said that, and as the blessing was resting upon him, they see God began to make all the animals give back to the spotted. And the spotted became so many, you know, among all the animals. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, and that was how Jacob became blessed. Now, listen, he saw a vision, a word of knowledge came. And ladies and gentlemen, the word of knowledge came with diligence. When that man chased him after Jacob ran away, and the man said, why did you go away with all my children and all that? And Jacob said, search if I took your hiders. And the man searched everywhere, couldn't get. I think that should be Genesis 31, right? Or 32, verses 38, 39, 40. You can check it. Eh? 31, verses 38, 39, 40. Then Jacob began to speak to Laban. Jacob said, for 20 years did I serve you. 14 years for your daughters and 6 years for your cattle. He said, he said, he said, the heat of the day scorched him and the cold of the night. He said, my sleep was taken away from me every night. He said, even when animals tore your, your beast tore your animals, he said, I brought, he said, I didn't bring it back to you. He said, I paid for it. Now, see, he was given account of diligence. I thought the man said, sir, listen, Oga, what I can see on you is grace. That God has blessed me because of there is a grace that can turn little to multitude on your life. In Genesis 30, Jacob said yes. But here Jacob is giving account on how that grace worked. Are you catching what I'm talking about? He said that grace worked on the note of one thing called diligence. He said day and night, he said I labored. He said my sleep was taken away at night. He said the heat of the day caught me and the cold of the night, he said caught me. While I was watching on your animals for 20 solid years, I worked very diligently. Now please understand, you know what he's saying? There is what I call a marriage mix between grace and labor to produce this result. That is what Jacob is saying. You may call it grace, okay? Okay? but you know one thing, I call it 
diligence. That is what Lebo, uh, Jacob is saying. He said, I was diligent when I was under you. But Paul, the apostle spoke in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. He said, I'm the least of the apostles, but by the grace given unto me, high labor. <laughs> so when you carry grace, you combine it with labor. Please, when you, and grace works by faith. The Bible says by grace, where you say through faith. So grace is, you can't pull grace except by faith. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So when faith pulls grace or pulls blessings, ladies and gentlemen, you couple it with diligence, and then before you know what is happening, the right result is generated. That is the convergence of the two. Am I talking to somebody here? So this is a blessed man. And he's saying that, ah, my faith pulled the grace. My faith in God. I'm a believer in God. He said, but at the same time, and I couple it with diligent hands, diligent working. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So when the rain came, he blessed the works of what? Of my hands. So ladies and gentlemen, faith will pull the blessings, but the blessings will rest on the works of your hands. Go and get open end contracts. Go and believe God for directions as to what to do. God is blessing people. I'm rounding up right now. God is blessing people so tremendously at the season. This is the season where, ladies and gentlemen, God needs you to help you. God needs you to open up some new doors. God needs you. The Spirit is giving you directions. You need to rise and you need to do it. God needs you to help you. You know, the Bible says something. I wanted to see it. When God blesses a man, God does not bless him outside, the, outside his hands a lot of times. God needs your hand to help you. The Bible says in Acts chapter 19 verse 11, and God works special miracles by the hands of Paul, the apostle. So you see, yes, God works special miracles, but he walks through the hands of Paul. His hands are in your hands. He wants to walk through your hands to achieve it. You know what I'm talking about? To be a blessing to you, God wants to walk through your hands. Look at those hands of yours. They will do great things. I'm prophesying those hands will do mighty things. I see God walking through your hands to build skyscrapers. I see God walking through your hands to erect great structures. Lift up those hands and say, they will do great things. The Holy Ghost said, you are talking of the future. He said, prophesy now. Say, they do great things. Are you catching what I'm talking about? I'm rounding up. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? So you see, those God needs those hands to help you. But Paul said, these hands of mine are provided for my needs. And the needs of those who are with me. So God, who supplies all our needs, walk through those hands to supply it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So your hands, ladies and gentlemen, are indispensable. in the program of God for your life lifting. I repeat myself. Your hands are indispensable. In the program of God, labor is indispensable. In the operation of faith for your lifting. Your labor is indispensable. This is the convergence of the two. Your faith brings the blessing and the blessing will rest on the works of your hands. To bless you in all the works of your hands. To open the windows of heaven, to pour out the blessing which is rain, to bless you in all the works of your hands. That's how it is. So it rests on your hands. It generates results on your hands. He needs you to bless you. I remember when I was in America, when I first got there. You know, I told you, I gave all the money out here. And I gave all my clothes out. And at the airport, even the about $150 that I had in my pocket, I, I put it there. I had a big lylon bag because I prayed for a billionaire. And his business opened in three days. And he blessed us with so much money. The money was so much that we carried in a big ba uh, bag. And money was very valuable then. And it was the highest notes then. I got to the airport. I said, I'm not changing this. I'm not. I said, all of you. A lot of people came to the airport to see me off. I said, all of you go and share it. They could. Pastor Louis said, he, he, he said, tears. He was moved to tears. How would this man survive? They opened my first bag, teaching tapes. They opened my second bag, teaching tapes. I only had the clothes I had on, on me. And I was going to school with 100 and something dollars in my pocket. I said, God who moved in Nigeria will move in America. His helping hand is global. Ladies and gentlemen, I went in. I got there. <coughs> A man was waiting. I told you the testimony. How I asked the man, I don't have toothbrush. I don't have anything. I said, please, I, I ain't going to get all this. And a lady came out and said, please, where is the grocery? I didn't even hear what the lady was saying. The man said, oh, this man is also asking where I can get all those things. Say, the two of you can go together. That lady became my friend that cooked for me for the whole year. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, and um, <clears throat> we started. At where we went to buy things, I, we bought things worth about 150 I only had about $10 or so in my pocket. Everything the lady bought, I paid for. Everything I bought. And then I came back. I said, God, now... I'm face to face with reality here. I had to sit down in my room on the floor. Baba, doors open, doors open. <clears throat> and as I was praying, ladies, it's a labor of love. It's a labor in prayers. I went to the dining to eat one day, the next day or so, and my phone rang, and I picked it. And somebody was saying, I said, your brother, he was talking about another thing. I said, your brother in America is going to run mad. I said, I see you have a brother, and I can see it's around New Jersey area. He said, yes, sir. His prophecy was so sharp and accurate. He said, he said, it's going to run mad. It's a stone of witchcraft from home. 
And ladies and gentlemen, some two days or three days after, the guy ran mad and they called me. They said, Pastor, so, 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 let's go there. I said, the brother called me from England and then <clears throat> got my ticket. We got there. Minister to him, the man got healed. The brother withdrew all he could withdraw in his life and gave it to me. The brother got healed and the testimonies became viral and invitation started. Ladies and gentlemen, that was how about $20,000 per month was coming in for me in America. It was my labor that generated the whole place. If I say I have faith and I see that doing nothing, nothing will happen. Come on, am I talking to somebody here? So it, as I began to deploy my strength into labor, ladies and gentlemen, all heavens were open and the blessing started. I got about five jeeps as a student, master degree student in America. Five. People go to go and pay money when they go to school. Me, I went to go and hand. <laughs> There's a difference. Faith turns into a wonder. <laughs> so as I'm running up right now, ladies and gentlemen, God needs your hands to lift you. You know, the Bible says something very, very important. In Proverbs chapter number 10, verse 22, the Bible says, it is the blessing of God that what? That make it rich. And it had it what? No, so. Now, where does the blessing land? It lands on the works of your hands. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 4, the Bible says, a diligent hand make it rich. It is the blessing of God that make it rich. Marry the two. The marriage mix will produce the blessing of God on the works of your hands. Make it rich. So walking alone without God, ladies and gentlemen, may not produce the right result. But when there's an involvement of divinity, ladies and gentlemen, the right result comes on the labor of your hands. He comes on the labor of your hands. That's why Satan himself, recognizing this, said in Job chapter 1 verse 9, Does Job serve God for nothing? Have you not blessed, have you not made an edge around him? Round his house and round all that he has. You have blessed the works of his hands. Can you see? So when the blessing was coming, it rested on the works of his what? Of his hands. And his goods are increased in the land. So ladies and gentlemen, when our faith is pulling blessing, when we are blessed here yeah, by faith, Abraham blessing upon us through Jesus Christ, let me respond by faith. When the faith pulls this thing, ladies and gentlemen, he pulls it, ladies and gentlemen, on the works of your hands. That's why you don't play with the works of your hands. Your labor of love, your labor in faith, your labor, I mean, your labor in uh, speaking the word, your of, of the word, the labor and prayers and your practical work that you are doing. Please make sure that is where the blessing rests. He rests on it. Even Satan himself recognizes it. Psalm 1, the last scripture, as, as, I, as I round up, because I still have many scriptures running in my heart. Psalm 1, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not by the counsel on the ungodly. Nor stand on the way of sinners, nor see by the seed of the scornful. But his delight is on the Lord, the Lord, and on his does he merit day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers or waters that bearest forth his fruit in the seasons. And his leaves shall not wither. And everything he doeth shall pro bless is the man he started with. How does the blessing and the blessedness of the man show up? And everything he doeth shall prosper. So if he's doing nothing, the blessing has no ground for manifestation. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So ladies and gentlemen, give God an awesome platform. What the Lord is speaking unto me right now is that there are heavy blessings in the hair. They need platforms for manifestation. They need platforms. Deuteronomy 15 verses 10 and 11. The Bible says, and the Lord will bless. For this God, the Lord will bless in all the works of your hands. And in all you set your hands to do. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the blessings are in the hair right now. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Somebody's asking, if the Bible says, Ephesians 1-3, that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, where are the blessings? Open more platforms, you will see the blessings. Begin to labor in prayers, labor in the word, labor in love, and ladies and gentlemen, labor with your hands. you see everything manifesting. Give him full glory as you rise to your feet. Worship him. <clears throat> everything written about me is great. Somebody say, I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. <coughs> hey, uh, Holy Communion. Somebody say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Will you say, I am, I am blessed? Saying everything written about me is blessed. I just want to praise you, Lord. I lift my hands to say, I love
of the spirit inside of me ladies and gentlemen this is so unusual I don't know why but this is what the Holy Spirit said to me and I submit to this please I submit to this I would not ordinarily have done this by myself but this is what the Holy Ghost said the Holy Ghost said bless the wine let them take it first and then the bread I said God why I think the order is bread and wine the Lord said I would take the unusual way to bless somebody here Father, I bless the wine. <laughs> By the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, as you take this right now, which is the blood of Jesus, it goes on the inside and clears the way right now for the bread which is the formation of miracles. And by the anointing of God, every barrier to your next level is removed. Amen. The flood of the Spirit of God through this wine, which is the blood of Jesus, right now raises a standard against all inimical forces and clears them off in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> And as you take this right now, it flushes your system. Amen. It flushes your way. Amen. It opens the gate and takes it to your next level. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's a swing, sweet spirit in this Please take the wine in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I know the spirit of the Lord. Oh, there are sweet expressions on his face.
not a building having several rooms. And the Lord said, I should tell people here, you will be moving in, I mean, building, erecting, buying, buildings, having several rooms, several apartments. I'm seeing it in the spirit. The Lord showed me clearly. I stand before God, I lie not. I lie not. I lie not. If you are just thinking, Lord, if I can just buy one apartment and I will be okay. The Lord said, I should tell you, you will not be okay. You will not be okay. You need to buy the entire building. Eh? 13 floors. 15 floors, 20 floors. You need to build it. God says, hey, bless is she that believes. For there shall be a performance of those things which are told out from the Lord. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In your lifetime, you are walking into this structure by the power of the Spirit. Where your natural effort can take you, the supernatural will lift you. I said the super, I saw a little burden on somebody's back here. The thing just dropped. Both check your back. Right now it has dropped. You came here with a back pain. Check it right now. It has dropped. I said, check it. If, if you check it and it has dropped, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, you see, you came here with that knee pain, that leg pain, and it has dropped. Shout hallelujah. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, God is healing, and he's still healing again and again. Tonight, somebody in the course of his dream will see Jesus. Yeah. You will see Jesus. Oh, for I have touched the hem of his garment. And his blood has made me whole. Somebody sing with me. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. It's all about him. Everybody rise and worship him. Worship him out of this place. In my soul, for I am touched. is anointing. Your life will never remain the same again. Now I see the reason why God called it Empowerment Night. What a privilege that we are here tonight. God bless you till we see you again. Shalom. Amen. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers. 080 Double three seven zero six nine three eight and zero eight zero two eight two eight one eight three nine or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at DGCCINTL. On YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church. Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.